Oh, here we are. Uh, whoop, whoop, just a second. <laughs> second. The water's boiling. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll be right. I'll be right back. Hold on. Don't go any place. Right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's, uh, that's my hot water for, oh, by the way, my backdrop, uh, this is a uh, South African uh, colored. This is, uh, uh, this guy, um, uh, this artist did this uh, rendering red, black, and green, you know, the, the liberation colors, or the, I guess they call it the uh, Pan-African colors, some of the Marcus Garvey kind of thing. But in the back, they also have my uh, Honduran flag. Um, Oh, this is a Lesotho blanket uh, from the Lesotho people. Lesotho people. Uh, it's my personal blanket. <laughs> oh, and I'm wearing actually. I'm a child of a goon. A goon in, in uh, Nigeria. The colors are um, are blue. Then it goes to Brazil's blue and white. Then it comes up to America's red, black, and green. I guess I'm in pure, uh, pure. Uh, you know, when, well, the Yoruba culture in Nigeria and Brazil is kind of laying up in northern the hemisphere. It's uh, Santeria. But uh, as a child of Laguna, I guess I'm going to the essence. <laughs> Talk about the essence. And that was the hot water. I had to take my wash in the morning. I'm here in my humble abode in, uh, in Dimbaza. It's not my humble abode. It's actually the hotel house. But I, I squat here. <laughs> I'm like the guidance person for this. For this situation, it's a community house. Um, I'm talking you now. Hey, this is a this is a this is a thing I'm talking to you on um, on YouTube because it's been a long time. I had this situation when I was in Virginia uh, where I have my two phones. You know, when I left I left one of the states right now. And I, I can't get back to next year to like next next whatever I get back to August or whatever it is. So what I would do was I take my morning walk, and then when I finish my morning walk. I would set up my phone, and it would be uh, I call it the uh, uh, the making of right of Instagram, and then I would I would film myself setting up for the Instagram and making it, you know, and have a uh, have an incense. But right now I have a this is what at night. Yeah, I got this situation where you have the the tea candle, and then you have that thing, and I put uh, uh, what do you call that uh, citronella oil in there, so that the mosquitoes don't bother me. Actually, now I have citronella and um, and uh, actually uh, uh, castor oil on the bottom too. Don't worry, about it. I don't know how that's working out. I just I experiment on everything. Why? Because because <laughs> I can. I can make myself my own petri dish. Anyway, so 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 then I would I would, I would set up for the Instagram, do all kinds of you know talking stuff da 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 da. Because in, on YouTube, officially when I do YouTube, I'm supposed to actually um. It's like a a, a, a a memoir recording of of, of my life, if you will, uh, and um, I'm usually where I uh, well that's it that's, a, that's what I do for for YouTube. But then when I saw when I got caught in the states for like a whole year or whatever in the COVID situation, I discovered Instagram. So I used to do Instagram. My again then when I again when I got back to Virginia, I did the making of Instagram, and then but then when I came here to South Africa, back to South Africa. I left that phone, but I couldn't do the making of. Then I started to do all the stuff on Instagram, and I don't really like that. Right? Instagram supposed to be instant. You're supposed to just one topic, blah, 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 blah. Here, I just wax and wane, and I just blah, 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 blah. So I'm doing this for YouTube, and after I uh, take my wash and change my clothes or whatever have you, this is, my, this is what I wear at night. You know, this, oh, this is Cape Coast. It's an initiative I started in, uh, in South Africa, actually, in uh, Cape Town. Modern audio drama. Your eyes won't believe your ears. That's our slogan, really good. You know, you got the written on the old time radio kind of thing. It was a great initiative. Um, well, that's what I do. I'm an audio dramatist. That's what I tell you. And so when I wake up in the morning, I usually play uh, I play music. I used to play uh, uh, Nina, uh, Nina as Nina Simone, Marvin, Marvin S. and Marvin Gaye, uh, Valerie Simpson. And then lately, I've, uh, well, I've been playing uh, Greg Porter. And then I do Prince. Well, I do those those those, those four artists, but uh, usually the artists I played from um, well Nina I pick any any of Nina's records because Nina's great everything she do right, and then uh, 
uh, for Marvin, I usually do a piece of clay, but sometimes I, you know, I do some other Marvin. Uh, and I always do Valerie Simpson. Love woke me up this morning. And Gregory Porter, uh, um, the liquid spirit, you know, the whole, the, let the damned water free, you know, the, it's how the colonizers damned up the water and their people couldn't get the water. Blah, blah. And then uh, for, uh, for Prince, I play his, uh, spirit, his gospel song, Love That Will Be Done. If you replace the if you replace the word love with God, God that will be done, then you understand it's a gospel song. And then what the cut I use, it's a he he wrote it for this um uh, I guess it's what was she Puerto Rican? She's South American, whatever. Uh, a, a Latino, a Latina, uh, a sister Marika. I think her name is Marika. Anyway, there's somebody did a mix of them both, and, and I sort of like that version. So that's what I usually play in the morning. Um, I just finished playing. Uh, I haven't gone to the other three the Marvin, blah, 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 but I did play uh, Nina, Isn't It a Pity, which is a song that people really play. It comes from her emergency ward. Uh, There's one where she kind of arms like that, you know, like that, called emergency ward. And there's only about three. I think Isn't It a Pity takes up one side like 11 minutes, then, then the other side like two cuts. Right? But that, if you listen to that album, they cut it's a live version. And she recorded, I know where it's recorded at. It was recorded from the, uh, the, the um, tour that that, uh, uh, what's that, Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland put together during the Vietnam era uh, called uh, Free the Army Tour. Actually, that's a, it's really, I want to, I don't want to curse, but it says, because I don't curse now, there's a whole long story where I don't curse these days. I can't curse, I can curse on a full moon, um, my, my, my birthday, and uh, New Year's um, Eve, uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and also in my own household. This is not my household, this is, my household is in Kubevu with my wife, but um, here I have to adhere to certain principles. There's no, there's no drinking, there's no smoking, there's no altered states of any of any kind. If people come here, they got to do that. In fact, I've got people trying to come here they, because when they're talking about them, then they want to go out for a smoke. I tell them, you got to go past the gate. <laughs> you can't, not even on the property. We're growing, we're growing uh, uh, farming, you know, crops here, crops, you know, uh, vegetables and, and fruits and all that stuff. Anyway, on this tour, uh, she recorded that song, Isn't It a Pity? Now, the reason why I know, I know you said, well, they, 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 didn't they record it. Now, this was, this was right outside McGuire Air Force Base because the Army wouldn't let them, uh, well, um, McGuire is surrounded by, uh, was it Fort, Fort Dix, whatever, it was, it was a big, big Army base. And they, they, they did these, all these tours, and they were right outside the Army base because it was against the Vietnam War. And so they, we had to be at a theater. Uh, outside the, the army base in the, in, the, in the local town there, and uh, and it was interesting because when they did the tour, you know, a lot of press would be there. They made sure the the, the press was not you know how they have the press away in the front. <laughs> no, this was all servicemen. The press had to be I don't know where they were or something else, but we were sitting right up there, and I was sitting next to this cat, uh, uh, well called by, by our last name Johnson, right? Now he's a guy. Well, he is he's like a not like a second, uh, a cousin of uh, Beverly Johnson, you know, the model uh, back in the day. This, but we're talking in the 60s, uh, right? A late, well, the early, I guess it's early 70s right now. Um, um, and anyway, so they 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 called him up, you know, to uh, to introduce Nina Simone. So when you hear the song, now the high priest is a soul, it's Nina Simone, that's Johnson, you know, my buddy, you know. Because uh, uh, we were at right, 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 past, right past in Ohio. We were at McGuire Air Force Base. And, um, and he's the one that really introduced me to, if you will, even though it's a little late, uh, to Trotsky. I was like, oh, you know, he was a Trotskyite, I guess, you know. And so, you know, I read a lot about Trotsky and stuff like that, but he's one. But I read a lot of stuff, you know. When I was in, when I was in college, in Bronx Community College, we had a little revolutionary group, you know, it was like three guys, three, three girls, and well, three guys, three gals. You know. We were kids <laughs> like that, and and uh, Bobby and Billy Shepard was our our mentors, if you will. And we studied, you know, we, we studied, you know, Che and, and, and the Krumba and the Real Red Book and Fanon. We read a lot of stuff, you know. We was like the brain trust for the the bigger uh, college group, uh, Simba, the, the black organization. And uh, I won't say we got exposed, but we had to come above ground because we was having a grand time just studying and, and giving information to the <laughs> group. But then we took over the school. Ah! <laughs> God. And we all had to take precision of responsibility. That's the first time I had a, I guess you would call it a communications thing because I was in charge of the telephone things, you know, where you had to plug the phone in, 
So, so I, I told everybody, you know, people that were trust him. He's how he answered the phone. Brown City College, this school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. And then, you know, they say, no, then they just keep on repeating that line. Bronx Community Colleges, the school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. They, and then with those things where you put, plug the thing in, and you unplug it, right? You gotta tell you the story. The Bronx DA called up, right? And he was just bumped. Yeah, just bumped right and he started, and then somebody, they, the cat, whoever it was, got all nervous. So I, I got, I had to get on the phone, because you know, you know so I said, Bronx Community Colleges, the school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. Who is this? The Bronx Community Colleges. <laughs> Like that. He said, you punk, I'll come down there. You know what I have? I'll come down. There's a Bronx DA. I said, uh, and then I kept on saying that. Then he said, I don't know who this is. I said, Santa Claus. And I I pulled the plug. Right? Uh, so I made it so they, 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 that's all they said. They couldn't curse people out. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't. They had to just say that line, you know. And then there was one guy, um, um, I have to say this way, a white guy, you know. He started, to, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I kicked him out. We got principles, right? I kicked them out. Um, I tell you all that because I'm going to get to the point. Uh, let me go back to uh, to Johnson. So that was when I first got into to Trotsky, but then later on when I started to travel, I, I went to Mexico's, uh, Mexico City, where Trotsky uh, uh, lived, you know, because he was uh, oinking Frida Kahlo down the street. I don't want to get into that part. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So anyway, so he, and I was fascinated because this guy, little actually a little guy, I can say, this little guy, he caused so much problem. Who was it, Stalin, Lenin? One of those people, I think it was Stalin, whoever it was, right? He caused them so much problem, they they, they had to assassinate him, right? But if you go to his place, it was this very, the, his, his uh, let's call it his communications room. It just had like a teletype, would it, would it, how would you get the, the news services, right? A typewriter, I think he had a phone. It must be an early phone, maybe he didn't have a phone. But that's all he, no, he didn't have a phone. I don't think he had his phone. And it's, it's, it's little, it's just a small, it's, it's, it's a small, Small as this room here, you know, this small room is small. And, uh, and I was fascinated how this guy, this, with just this stuff, could cause so much problems. I said, wow. And then, and now let me skip to, to something. Uh, Henry Dumas, uh, well, before I make the transition, let me just say, so I was just fascinated at the uh, communication. So with this, with my whole communication thing, then I, when I was in, um, when I got out of Bronx Community, when I got it, let's say I had to unceremoniously leave Bronx Community College. <laughs> I went into the Air Force, and then when I, that's when I met uh, Johnson, we had all that stuff. So the next phase, when I got to Air Force, uh, when I was in the Air Force, I had a part-time job because uh, 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 I was a lab technician in the Air Force, and I, I became a medic, you know, uh, and, in the, and, and, and I had a part-time job at, at uh, uh, Princeton Hospital. Prince Hospital time, then became Princeton Medical Center. And that's been all the problem. Because if you see a medical center, it means they have a lot of administrators, a little bit of doctors, a lot of administrators. A hospital used to have a lot of doctors and a few administrators. We won't get into that right now. So everything changed, and the whole medical field changed, and that was uh, that's all she wrote. Right? Uh, in fact, that's why you don't have healthcare in, in the states, uh, free healthcare, whatever it is, because if everybody had free healthcare, they wouldn't be afraid of losing their jobs and blah blah. blah. It's a long story. They wouldn't even go to the military, all that stuff. Okay, so. Uh, 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 so when I get out, so, so I was like I said, I was a, a, a lab technician. I had this part-time job at Princeton, and 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 uh, I was it's, uh, a part yeah, at Princeton, uh, but Princeton University is there, and uh, I'm I'm gonna make this kind of shorter than it should be, uh, but I, I that's when I met JB, and he was doing this radio program called a Saturday Soul with JB, and they they was supposed to be a community program, you know, so they invited people to come, and I was writing a lot of poetry at the time, so I came there, and he, uh, and uh, it was a long story, but anyway, I became the poet in residence for the, uh, for the Saturday Soul with JB, right, then from there, we had a crew, and that, my whole, and I was just fascinated with what he did with radio, and so my whole, because I was a theater, before, I should say this, before I came to the Air Force, I was in theater, I was trained at the Negro Ensemble Company for, uh, for 1967 to when I went in in 1970. Anyway, the point is, uh, so I wanted to get back to theater. That's why I did my time. I would do my time in the Air Force about four years, and I was going to shoot right back to theater. So I sort of got waylaid from this college thing. Uh, um, and But uh, I wanted to take speech classes so I could be better in theater, uh, even though well, I would be better in theater. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the, I was at the uh, Livingston College, Livingston, Livingston College, part of Rutgers University, which is like, 
Livingston College like an HBCU dropped in the middle of, a, of Ivy League College. Some sometime I'll tell you about that, which is really fascinating. The only way it, I, only way an HBCU can exist is if they are uh, um, 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 protected by uh, something with a lot of money. Uh, one of these Ivy League College with a lot of money, who actually got their money from from slavery. We won't get into that even right now, but my point is that. Um, so uh, so. Uh, uh, and, and so um, when I got back to when I got to Livingston College, uh, I couldn't take speech classes because we did this different campuses and Douglas campus was a campus for the women and the speech class was over there and all the women wanted to take speech and then I got sort of sh couldn't get into that right so I ended up going to the communications department and uh, and uh, and the rest is sort of kind of weird history you know he actually started at, from uh, Saturdays over JB. Because that's why I saw him right around the board. We did all kinds of skits. We were way, 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 way ahead of our time. I mean, way ahead of our decades ahead of our time. What we were doing on that radio program. When I got to uh, uh, Livingston, I uh, I took I took the the, the the broadcast license test. And I had my own radio program, Variations in Blackness. Too bad don't have any tapes of that. That was really amazing. That's where I met uh, Loretta, Loretta Dumas. I won't tell you that stuff. Well, that's where I met Reddy Dumont. and we got exposed to Henry Dumont. And when I start reading, I get on the tear. I just read everything, you know, <laughs> like that. Uh, so, uh, 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 so what next? And and, 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 and and so I ended up in the communications department and had my own radio program, blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I'm actually a communications major. But in communications, it was uh, actually double major. Communications and, and uh, uh, English literature. Part of English literature was black, uh, was film studies and, and and black literature is my specialty in that, but um, in, um, in in communications, uh, actually it, it was like a, a video editing or ed yeah video editing and TV production, right? Radio, I'm sort of really self-taught at radio. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Don't you think? Because right? I'm a radio person, I'm an audio dramatist. Right? Um, so all that all that happened, and uh, then when I got out, when I came back to the states, it's like it had been ten years, but all of all of the acting people, all my acting contacts were all in Hollywood, you know, they all went, you know, because I was Negro and Samuel, when you had like, like Rosalind Cash and Esther Rowe and, and Moses Gunn and there's a bunch, bunches, bunch, bunches of people, very famous people, right? Um, so I got the most, we get into that right now, that's a tragedy because I don't know my high school yearbook, everybody signed it, you know, um, you know, all the big time people, you know, uh, Ed Cambridge was our teacher, you know, Michael Schultz, all these people were there, right? It was really, really, really amazing. Uh, Sterling Brown, what? There were a lot of people, and uh, so I was sort of uh, upset because they were gone, and, and and it was like a lot of nepotism and a lot of a uh, 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 just cronyism was happening then, and I wasn't, didn't like the theater scene. So basically, I ended up, uh, um, uh, long story shorter, I ended up at WBAI and and and, and, and applying my craft of audio drama to that and. Uh, and then the rest is what it is. Um, so I bring all that up and say, uh, so it's interesting how things keep on folding on each other. You know, you know my, my life has been one of continuing moving and not really s stable. I mean, I have this whole weird thing. Um, one of my fraternity brothers, uh, Pentagon Military Fraternity, is part of the Cadet Corps. I grew up in the Cadet Corps from nine years old to when I left to the Air Force. And the Cadet Corps is amazing. The New York City Mission Society Cadet Corps is an amazing situation, you know, paramilitary kind of thing, you know. And, you get a lot of discipline, a lot of knowledge back then. I mean, everybody came through. I mean, John Henry Clark would come through every once in a while and teach us stuff. It was, it was amazing. Men, men, men teaching men. <laughs> well, it's connected with men and women, but I'm just trying to say, yeah, the drum of Bugle Corps, you know, um, that's the Warriors. You, you've seen them in the film uh, uh, Bruce's Millions uh, with Richard Pride, and they go to Yankee Stadium, and there's a marching band, that's the maroon and white colors. That's, 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 the, uh, that's, that's the Warriors. Well, Kaneko was a, a just a, an incredible grounding kind of thing, helping with military to breeze on through basic training because you know, you no, know, it was just amazing. Uh, so I'm forged by by that kind of thing. One of my one of my fraternity brothers one time said years after he said, uh, no, about that time, man, he said Ron Mason. He said, uh, said Anthony, you know, uh, you're you're really great at you know groups and stuff like that. But in interpersonal relationships, you suck. And, you know, I wasn't upset because it's true. <laughs> I am not good one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, like, I can't 
for the life of me, I don't know why it is. I, for, I, I, for, for actually for life, I, I, I figured it out. Um, I'll say recently, in the recent years, you know, what I mean? because every relationship I had, you know, be it with, with a woman, wives, uh, children, whatever, have it, can never get a sustain. It's like really weird. Now it would upset. It upset me when I, I kept because nothing really upsets me. It keeps on. I keep on questioning. So how do I get into this situation right now? Again, uh, I'm here. I'm alone. You know, um, I spend like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday here at at the hotel house. And then on, on basically Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, back to Monday, I'm at Kubeva with my wife, right? Um, and we don't have a child. We don't have a child. She has an older child. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but she has her things that she does. She's a tailor. She's a master tailor. I always, that's the other thing. I always hang, hang out with the people who are as, absolute masters of what they do. But at this particular point, my relationships, you know, even with her, there's a different kind of relationship. It's kind of interesting, like, like my sister's the closest one to, if you want to put it as far as family goes, or we have our family, sort of. Uh, we only have one more sister left us. There's Rachel. She's up in, 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 in an institution in Willowbrook. Well, she was in Willowbrook. Well, she's an institution. And uh, so my sister, when we get, even, even her, you know, it's uh, interesting. But with her, uh, when we get together, things get done. It's really interesting. It's like, see, we get done. She, she gets a lot done. You know, it's, it's it's amazing the relationship because I don't with my sister. I don't really talk a lot. I talk a lot every place else, right? And but I don't really boss around or nothing like that. Just like yeah, go ahead. But even with my wife in the household, sometimes I argue with her, but it's her household. I don't care. Blah blah blah. But when I'm with my own group, that's with myself. I'm really hard. I'm really very disciplined. Whatever happens, and the, and then but in this this current situation, the two close relationships I have, or the the things that that matter to me, if you want to say. Is uh, uh Mr. Cullen, who uh, who's the organizer for what we're doing here in the hotel house? I'm the I'm the guidance person. I I always say if I the 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 thing outside. I should take this out. You see this? Here, here. It's raining outside, but I'm gonna get a little wet because I'm gonna show you something here. The hotel house. We just put this out. Ooh. Hope you can see this. See, see, this hotel hut house, right? And over here you see um, Mr. Clodium and Peter. He's the organizer. On this side here, we have, uh, where am I? Here, Anthony J. Sloan, guidance, right? And we just established in October 2023. That, was, that would be this year. Okay. Ah, ah. Like I said, the, what, what, I, what I do here and what I do with, 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 with YouTube, if you will, as I uh, and basically it's like a memoir, but it's a living memoir. Uh, at any time, I guess I can just, you know, go uh, speech to text and type up my memoir, right? <laughs> it's the modern way. You know, instead of being holed up someplace and having to whatever, 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 let me blow my nose. Just say, I guess my water's getting reheated. <laughs> Take my water. Uh, anyway, so. So I'm, I'm down, so it's too close to uh, Mascote right there. And then in Cape Town, her really good friend, uh, Ian. And Ian is amazing, right? Again, when we get together, I don't do nothing. I just be hanging out because he has a great family. I just be hanging out. But we get, things get done. I want to say we get done. Things get done. And Ian is amazing. He's uh, unbelievable. He's an amazing cat. Uh, every, the way he deals with, he's just amazing. He's got these initiatives happening. And I'm just there giving him moral support. <laughs> And again, I can't be with people for a long time. I, I might be with him for like two, well, we have we have to work with just like three weeks. Like I'd be with him like three weeks at a time or whatever it is. But I like to go to Cape Town and visit him because I like him. I love him, you know? I love his family. I don't get it. Anyway, uh, but my clothes is with me all the time. And uh, since I'm an elder, he makes sure nothing. I don't know. It's a, it's a whole it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. And since he's African, it's a whole thing. I can't even explain it. I don't even know. I don't even know. I know how it happened, but I just don't know. Um, okay, I bring that all to say. Um, uh, to, to, I'm, I'm gonna sort of get this closed. But every once in a while, uh, you know, we're we're working on something really. Uh, we're the hotel house is up, and now we're doing. We, we do community work. Like well, I'm gonna finish here. I just started talking to you with blue light. It's my blue light's my favorite time, time of day. Uh, I gotta get ready to uh, get washed and everything. 
and go to where the uh, the Boston Society for the Aged, you know, the Boston Society for the Aged, they say, I call them the Wisdoms, you got to make that sign the Wisdoms, my unit, uh, where I give them movement classes every morning, you know, well, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, mornings, I give them a, a movement classes, you know, based on uh, Qigong and, and, and Tai Chi, and some some theater stuff that I know, and some just stuff that I know about thing. Because old people you gotta move, you know, and that's good for you. So I don't know. I'm battling, battling. I'm, I'm working on the blood pressure. I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. It's like I just made some, uh, just made some sea moss, man. I gotta have some sea moss this morning. Should I get some sea moss now? I should taste it now, man. Okay, hold on, I'll give that a second. So anyway, um, uh, so I do that. But we were yesterday. We were at uh, Kubevu because we had to do something. Because my, my wife's up at, at Fort Wolfrey. She's coming back today. But we had to do some stuff at the house, right? And so since we had we, it's a lot. Taxis take a long time to come back and forth. So I was looking for this. Uh, going to uh, to make that story a little shorter. Going to the 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 the, the uh, say the middle school. Because I wanted to, they have these called bunk off weeks, you know, where when the administrators are doing it, it's at the end of the term, they're taking their tests or whatever. Have you. And sometimes the children have to stay there. So I wanted to take a, just a group of them and do audio drama workshop because I do it for free. So I wanted to meet the principal just to set something up maybe for, you know, what's going to happen when they have a bunk off week. Usually it's December, right? So this guy, you know, he was like, what? Like, you know. There's this whole thing with teachers, especially in, in Africa, they get some sort of reverence. Or people who, who people who have positions, you know, they get some sort of, like, they're, they're, they're all that in the bag of chips, as we used to say in the States, right? Um, and he was very, like, ooh, I'm like, oh, this vibe was really bad. So they just want to just talk to you. Blah, blah, blah. He was just looking on his phone and doing all kinds of things. And this, this walk, walk. Well, uh, uh, I don't have no time right now. I'll see you. Uh, we'll we'll talking in, in January. And he didn't really listen to what I'm saying. I introduced myself, said what I did, what I was going to do, that. But he didn't say, I said, look, we need to sit down now and just talk about what I do. And I'll talk to you in January. I'm like, whoa. But lucky for me, this is a village situation. So all I have, well, what I have to do is I got to go to the village. If villages have these councils or committees or whatever it is, I'll go to the committees, which is basically the parents, and I'm going to say, hey, here's what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. They will get it done. Because obviously, obviously the, 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 the principal is an idiot. <laughs> okay, I don't call people names, but he's not, he don't got it all together. right? So things like that, you know. I, at this particular point in my life, when I do, I have to live very low to the ground. This is a, it's a challenge for myself. Like right now, the rest of this month, I have, I have like, my money is like nothing. right? So I got to survive, you know, and still, it'll happen. Why? Because I want it to happen, right? So anyway, uh, so, um, so, 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 so that's that, you know. So that's what I do. I, I, and, and we, like I said, I work in the community. Um, I work with the, the old folks. What I want to do, in, in where I, where I live, is is to is, is to hang out with, with the young 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 younger people and teach them audio drama because it's really a literacy program, reading and writing and stuff like that. Okay, because you have to write the scripts. Yeah, it's, it's audio drama. Uh, audio drama is like theater for the microphone. Yeah, if you, let me put it this way: If you audio dramatist, which means you can write a script. If you can write a script, that means you uh, a, a script. And we do it uh, without a narration, you know. So that means you can write dialogue. If you write dialogue, that means that you're a playwright, right? If you're a playwright. That means that you're you're you And because we do audio drama, you can do comic books, you know, because you have get some somebody do the do, do the graphics or do the do the little. Um, little characters, put them in a bubble, you get a comic book. And, and what is a popular novel, but but basically a, a, a dialogue and long descriptive path. path. So you're a novelist, right? <laughs> you see, you see, it just keeps on going. Then plus, of course, you're a script writer. So this thing, can you can be a lot of things, you know, like that. Okay. So, uh, so, so, oh, by the way, I told you, it, it's in the pity was the show, the song, the Mina Simone. You should listen to that song. It's really uh, applicable to to do what's happening these days. Now, why I'm to, what, I, what I'm going to be talking about on my Instagram, I think, is that I'm really, I'm too through with folks, right? Because you have, with all the stuff that's happening with guys in, 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 in Israel, you got, you got, uh, 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 I, call, I call myself an American African. You got American African, you know, mouth off, they be this, not our fight, blah, 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 blah. You got other people, blah, 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 blah. Everybody's, you know, they, 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 
people talk that they know this and that, and da, 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 da. You know, and like what really missed me is like some people will say, especially I'm talking about American Africans now. Um, American, by American, by American, I mean it's the people that been through but through chattel slavery or through the antebellum and the whole the whole uh, red line and that that thing. The, the the people formerly known as Negroes, right? You know, if you wasn't, you know what I'm talking about. If you came through the Middle Passage and then you got here, you became a Negro. <laughs> if you was an African, you became a Negro, <laughs> and then you became a whole bunch of other names, all throughout the, up to you know all, all, all other derogatory names, um, you know, colored, and then you became colored and it became you know, African-American or Afro-American and African-American and black, but it's always been black. And now I don't know what I don't people, but I, I insist. Uh, uh, African is my middle designation. Let's put it that way. So I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an American African made in the South Bronx of New York City, right? So for instance, I went to, when I was in Brazil, like you, I would, you, you would be an American, uh, an American African made in uh, 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 Salvo de Bahia. You see? It'd be, be like that. If you if you was a, like my, 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 God, I have the Honduran flag, but it's from the Garifuna people. Uh, it's a long story. Anyway, so my, supposedly, depending on who you believe, my father comes from, from Panama, right? So, so he would be an American, African made in Panama, or Cologne, Panama. You see what I'm saying? So that you, you say if you're from, from, from Cuba, you'd be, You'd be, uh, I guess it's Caribbean, but it's still American. How, how, how does they would say Cuba? You'd be a you'd be a, a Caribbean African made in Cuba, or if you're from uh, Haiti, you'd be you'd be an, a, an American, or I guess they may, may maybe they call themselves Carib a Caribbean African made in Haiti. See that kind of thing. You see you're Puerto Rico, you'd be you'd be an American. African made in Puerto Rico. You see, see how that goes? You'd be an American, you could be an American African made in, in Montreal, Canada. That kind of thing, you see? Or, or you you're in Ghana. You you you'd be you you'd you'd be a uh, 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 an African made uh, uh, I'm sorry. What would you be? Yeah, you I guess since that, that I, I was naming naming countries. Well, I guess you'd just be an African. Or you'd be a Ghanaian African made in where area of Ghana you're from, or maybe you just be an African made in Ghana. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's that's fine. That'll work for me. Yeah, you, you'd be a Moroccan made in, uh, uh, rather, an African made in Morocco, or wherever you are from, whatever. See see how that works. Like you you if you if you're in, I'm about to go to India, you know. So you could you could be let's say let's talk. You'd be a a a, 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 a Sri Lankan uh, African made in the name of whatever city is. Where the area in, in Sri Lanka you're made from, you see what I'm saying? Or I'm going to Tamil Nadu, right? You you'd be uh, an Indian, I guess. They, don't they have another name? They, there's a, I gotta get that name. The, the, India is not really India's. This is other name for India. I forget what whatever it is, you know, of African made in Tamil Nadu or made made in uh, Pondicherry. Whatever. You see, that's how that goes. You could be a Chinese African uh, made in. Just say Beijing or whatever they they got happening like that. You see, keep on going like that. You you be a a, a, a Vietnamese African made in uh, Hanoi. You know, see that that, that, that yeah. African is a, your middle designation, which brings up the point that I want to bring up. Everybody's talking about the Palestinians. Palestinians, you know, they're fighting for the Palestinians. I got you. I agree, right? But see, there's a designation. There's this thing called Afro um, Palestinians. And there, just like this, just like you had the 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 the, the, the Ethiopian uh, um, Israelis, you know, they are all the like Marcus Garvey said that wherever you go in the world, the darker people are always on the bottom. So if if I'm fighting for Palestine, uh, my focus is going to be on those so-called Afro uh, Afro uh, Palestinians. So it would be do you be a Palestinian African? Huh? Made in Palestine. See, so so even though I'm fighting for 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 Palestine, when I'm talking, I'm talking about I'm talking about those 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 I guess they I'll, I'll use the proper term those Afro Palestinians. That's who I want free. They're getting bombed too, but nobody's talking about them. And if you're black, no, black, you know, 
And you say, oh, that's not our fight. No, we are every place. In fact, if you want to do it, especially you, you, uh, you know, civil rights, you, you kumbaya, you, you civil, you know, you uh, Martin Luther King people, uh, Martin Luther King, hey, everybody's got to be free. So you still in that fight. You see, you're still in that fight. And um, it, it, like I said, if you're if you're a hotel brother or a Pan African brother, then of course you got to fight for the your, your focus. The tip of your focus, the tip of your focus, has to be those Afro um, Palestinians, those Palestinian Africans. Or if you want to keep on going, those Israel's the way it is. Those those um, those those those, those those Israeli, I'm saying, those Israeli Ethiopian Jews, Jewish people, Hebrews, whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? You still have a focus because wherever you are, there's going to be some black folks that's on the bottom. So your fight is everything. And plus, you got to fight anyway because if so everybody's free, nobody's free, which means you got to fight it. This is, I, I find the, the whole um, the, uh, American descendants of, of chattel slavery, the, you know, the North American descendants of child slaves, ADOS, uh, 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 with American descendants of sla slavery, slavery the institution, not the, not the, right? I, I love that movement, right? Because they're focused. They're, I don't like the name, and then, you know, a bunch of stuff, but when I say I don't like, I like the name, it's fine, but I think this it's an incomplete name. You have to fill it in. But you know, you got a lot of people, they be talking about, oh, the Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. says, they don't listen to Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. because you did. You you understand that you have to get rid of racism, which means racism in every culture. You get rid of racism, which means you have to get rid of capitalism because capitalism is based on, you know, the, the preying on the downtrodden, the downtrodden music. I won't get into that right now. They just pick and choose things they want to say from them. Um, uh, uh, John, I just listened to some John Henry Clark. I listened to John Henry Clark. Hey, look, I used to go to First World Alliance, right? Like I said, John Henry Clark taught the Cadet Corps. Well, came through. he taught everything at home, right? So a lot of people talking about, I know John Henry Clark, or, or Queen Mother Moore, you know what I mean? I hung out with Queen Mother Moore. You know, a lot of people, I mean, I, with these people, new, 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 you know, <clears throat> it's amazing to me, right? Even somebody like 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 Dr. Sabi, I know, I hung out with Dr. Sabi for a second, but more importantly, I was with Dr. John Henry, or John Henry, uh, Dr. Moore, Johnny Moore, the, you know? So all, all these people, they have a precursors, and so and, 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 and their spirit is there. That's the whole thing. Their spirit is there. For my thing, with let's say with, with Henry Dumont, I never knew Henry Dumont personally. But I knew Henry, his widow, uh, 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 Loretta, knew his sons, Michael and David, right? Knew his sons. You know, shook their hands, hugged them, whatever it is. So 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 I'm sort of infused. Let me put it this way: spirits never go. Your 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 essence never go away. You know, so and then actually Henry is kind of interesting, more interesting for me because I did a ritual to Henry to put him over to his proper ancestors. Uh, that's a whole other story I won't get into right now. Someplace on my YouTube channel, how that happened, right? So I have a deep connection to Henry Dumont, right? In fact, maybe I'm making this because because uh, Loretta doesn't get Instagram, but I want her to know this, to to, to see this, to understand this. So I'm I'm obligated. To Henry Dumont, an incredible writer. Um, it's just I'm just obligated to that, but I'm obligated to a lot of things. Like um, I had a I had a, had a um, um, I hate to say girlfriend, a, a lady friend. Okay, well, a girlfriend. So we were young, was in college, right? And she was, I guess she was at Drew Drew University, one of the universities. And uh, and what's that guy, Moshe Diane, you know, the guy with the patch, you know, came came there. So I'm the kind of I'm the kind of American African, like I'd be the only American African in the room, you know. I'm Mr. Dr. Richard Leakey, I'm, I'm, and at the end I go talk to them because I'm because I'm an American African, I'm black, right? They're always interested, right? So Mr. Dan gave this speech at the name, and afterwards the people, you know, I came up. Blah, 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 blah. It was really interesting because he immediately was just looked at me and, and gave me this look, and then this first thing I said. Uh, Ralph Bunch, told about Ralph Bunch was a great man and blah, blah, blah. And I was sort of curious, I said, whoa, whoa, what's this? And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I said, what's this about? You know, shook my hand. And blah, blah, blah. But the way he looked at me, such a, uh, it's almost like a reverence, you know? And I guess it wasn't me, it was my skin color, something like that. And of course, I didn't find out later on, talk about Ralph Bunch, 
but I, I'm another guy. Not, I knew about Ralph Bunch anyway, but Ralph Bunch, hey, I told you I, I, I taught at, uh, well, Cape Coast, is, but I taught at, uh, at University of Cape Town. He did some graduate studies there, and he went through Africa. I got to read his thing when he these travels through Africa. So, in, in fact, I, uh, like I said, if your presence is, is you, you, wherever you go, your presence, some nano whatever is still with you. So I walked where Ralph Bunch was, right? I walked with, you know, I said, University for here. So all those people I go to, you know, you know, you know your tutus and your and your Mangalisa Robert Sabukwes and your, your Madibas and your whatever they all went to Fort Hare. That's a whole funny thing because people say all these great people went to Fort Hare. Oh yeah, they were forced to go there. So I don't want to so all that stuff. Anyway, so all these ZK Matthews, all these people, you know, they they they're nano in me. You know, they're nano in me. I, what's happening right in Burkina, Burkina Faso? Right, I met Rob. I met, <laughs> oh guys. Oh guys, oh man! Look, all I'm trying to say these 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 folks, you know, uh, 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 but um, uh, damn, I don't think it's getting the buzz. Thomas Sagata, I met him because I was doing for the BA. I was recording. He came up to New York, so, you know. So I, I'm Thomas Sagata. I have a he's in me. All these people, if you walk through these things, they're in you, right? So you have an obligation. To free everybody. That's the point. You can't pick and choose. Oh, I'm just I'm a pan I'm a I'm a pan Africanist. But then you have a situation where you have you have a, 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 a Palestinian Africans, and you're not going to get in a fight for Palestinian for Palestine to give to to free those Palestinian Africans who are being subjected by the Palestinians. You see, the the fight never ends. I have American Indian in me, you know, Mohawk, whatever have you. So. Even if I would finish any if free black people, I still got to get the brothers off the, the brothers and sisters off the reservation. No, you, you understand what I'm saying? I just don't understand how people can pick and choose their fight. You're a human being. Everybody's supposed to be human. I mean, it's just simple as that. I'm on Africa. No, Africa is known before all all this stuff. Africa is always humane. You treat everybody humane. Every Af to be an African, you are humane. I got this from Mengele Sarabas I was reading him. Actually, I was reading him. I said, this sounds awfully familiar, right? And it was like, he was saying the same thing that Malcolm X was saying. But he was before Malcolm X. So how is that possible, right? Then I realized they both read, uh, 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 what's, what's his name? Uh, uh, the Caribbean guy, the English guy. Uh, uh, blank on his name, Brandon, too. Oh, man. But they all read him, you know? So, C.L.L. James. C.L.R. Oh, James, you know, they all read him. They, they read him. So they, they he was saying, so it's all connected. This all connected. When people say they're Garveyites, I say, oh, yeah, really? Oh, I'm so happy, you know. Well, you know, you know if you're Garveyite, then you have to understand there's a whole lot of, there was a whole lot of other Pan-Africans there, and, you know, happening before, before him and after him. And he may be made it popular, but, you know, if you want to put it that way, you know, for that matter, Booker T. Robert, Booker T. Booker, Booker T. Washington was a Pan Africanist, right? I, mean, you know, I don't understand how people can say stuff and they don't really think, or they can exclude things. It's it's amazing to me, right? Okay, so, uh, oh well, uh, Delaney, uh, that that that's where that's who the first Pan African, you know, whatever. So anyway, let me end this here because uh, uh, because I gotta get ready for the rest of my day. Uh, it's been good uh, talking to you. Now I gotta get ready to do some other stuff, right? So that's it for me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.